Hi everybody, I'm Erica Ryle and I'm a volunteer with the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. And today we're visiting a vernal pool. What is a vernal pool? Well, some of you may remember in the fall as fourth graders, you visited this vernal pool in Robinson Woods. And I have the sign behind me that tells you a bit more about it if you take a walk with your family. But vernal pools are critically important for biodiversity in a place like Robinson Woods. Think of all the animals that live and depend on a vernal pool. Vernal means spring, so in the springtime it fills with water and many animals like salamanders and amphibians, they will only spend, they will spend their entire life, which may be 20 years long, within a hundred yards of that pool. Under all the leaves are all sorts of nutrients that they need to breed and live and so they eat and they lay their eggs and those eggs sometimes you'll see the eggs even turn green and that's an algae that grows inside that egg which will actually feed the tadpole as it's growing and produce oxygen for them. So pretty cool to see that relationship um, right there in the pool. So here we've been exploring under some logs nearby the vernal pool and sure enough, we have found a couple of different species of salamanders. We have two red-backed salamanders, very common. You probably find them a lot in your own yards. And then we have this gray one, which could be a different species or it might actually be a immature red-backed salamander. And then, we have the yellow spotted salamander, and this is actually a small yellow spotted salamander. They can get quite big, almost as big as your whole palm. And they actually have a really big mouth. It's kind of hard to see from a distance, but they have a very big wide mouth to eat all of the different um, critters that they find in the vernal pool. And whoop, I'm losing people. They will eat mosquito larvae. They will eat some microscopic guys in there. Um, but they're really, really beautiful, like the coloration. And these guys, I, I find them very shy and hard to find. So it's one of those things that when you find one, it's pretty exciting. But we were just looking around really close to the pool. And there you go, like magic. We have all sorts of salamanders. So in my hand, I have a small egg mass, which contains um, amphibian eggs. So amphibians are a group of animals and they have some really specific characteristics to them. They're very much like reptiles and sometimes people get the two of them confused because, well, both reptiles and amphibians are cold-blooded, which of course means that they can't regulate their own body temperature. When on really warm days, their body temperature warms up and on really cold days or cold nights, their body temperature lowers. So in that way, they're the same. They both lay eggs, but that's kind of where the, the difference starts. And um, sorry, reptiles will actually lay eggs on ground. They always bury, bury their eggs either in, in sand or dirt, whereas amphibians will always um, lay their eggs in water. And when reptile eggs hatch out, the little babies look exactly like the adults and they just continue to grow and mature. But when amphibian eggs hatch out, they don't look anything like the adults. They have to go through a change or a metamorphosis until they are uh, grown adults. And they start their, their life um, as aquatic animals, like tadpoles. The other difference is that reptiles like to keep their skin dry. They can get wet, of course, but if their skin dries out, it's fine. Amphibians, on the other hand, always have to keep their bodies wet, and they primarily live either in a pond or vernal pool, or when they're hibernating, they bury themselves under leaf litter and logs where it's still kind of damp and moist, so their skin can stay wet all the time. So right in there, they're a little bit hard to see, but there are several different egg masses from actually, I believe, different species of amphibian as well as in different stages of development. You can see the super cloudy ones, and there's ones that have um, sort of a white dot in the center, and there's also some that have a little black embryo in the center. They move it along. There's some, 
some over here that are submerged as well as ones that are attached. So certain species of amphibian will actually attach their egg masses to pieces of grass or twigs to help ensure that they don't drift away. What we're looking at here are some yellow spotted salamander eggs in different stages of development. When they're first laid, they're really close together and they seem pretty small. And then they got it, they kind of expand. And what's really cool is sometimes you can actually see a line down the middle of the dark spot in the middle of the gel-like mass here. And that's actually cell division occurring as the embryo turns into a little tadpole. And then what Eva's holding here is a clouding up mass. It's probably gonna turn green soon with the algae that grows in there. And that's that algae I was talking about before where the the salamanders will actually eat that algae while they're growing and the algae is making oxygen for them. So pretty cool, the different stages here. And you can actually, as they get bigger, they turn into more of that tadpole shape that you're familiar with and they start to wriggle inside the egg. And it's really cool to watch them. They, it's only, you know, they only move every now and then, but if you're watching real close, you'll see the tail move, and that is just so awesome. And then they actually hatch out and they'll have little gills on the side of their neck, and they'll swim around like tadpoles for a while before they develop uh, legs. So a vernal pool may dry, actually dry up in the summertime. There's no other source of fresh water. So there's not a spring that feeds this. It's just, it, it melts in the winter time. It might be frozen over in the winter and it might melt and it leaves this pool in the spring. So there's no really big predators like fish in the vernal pool because there's no way for them to kind of get in there. But it's really significant for the food chain, mammal, water source for mammals, food source for other mammals and other, other animals like bigger amphibians maybe even owls. We were just hearing a barred owl hooting in the background. So you have the significance of the food chain here, but what's also significant in a vernal pool and what makes them so important to protect is the indicator species like fairy shrimp that live there. Indicator species tell us about the health of an ecosystem. And so when you have those indicator species present, it tells us that this ecosystem is really, really healthy. And when we lose those indicator species, it's giving us an alert to something's going wrong here. And so we wanna protect the vernal pool for those species, also species like the salamanders we were looking at. Those salamanders won't come back. They, they only come back to this pool to lay their eggs. They will only ever come back to this pool in their life. Ooh, thank you, bud. And so it's really important because if we got rid of this pool or this pool was destroyed in some way, those species essentially would become locally extinct and, and we would lose them. And so we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we protect that. And that's why we should learn more about it. And if you're interested in learning more, um, the Land Trust is a great resource that way. Uh, the library can be a great resource. One of my favorite field guides is right here. Um, it has lots of different species that I might find um, in a vernal pool. And, and that includes things like mosquito larvae, which are kind of gross and I don't really love mosquitoes, but they're really important for these guys to eat when they're tadpoles. So a lot of fun learning here. Uh, get outside, take a look, you know, hold some salamanders, be nice to them, and then uh, take them back. Beautiful. Oh, I'm going to